so uh, we are going to talk about the tepex framework and a very good logo uh, punya has designed for it punya mishra who is basically the uh, person behind this framework and this is a very very popular framework across the world and it has grown up uh, a lot in past 14 15 years it is not a very old framework launched in 2006 by kohler and uh, mishra so uh, this is basically the mirror image logo. So if you see its mirror image, it will look like same. The tapex remain the tapex anyway. Uh, in their paper, they wrote a very important quote and which I want to share with you. The technology itself is not as important as how to integrate it with the classroom instruction. So sometimes you know we have a mad rush uh, behind the technology i want to use this technology i want to use that technology if i am using this technology i am a good technocrate if i am not using this particular technology i am not good technocrate so which technology you are using is not that important as how you are using the technology and how you are integrating the technology you may find people who are not using very advanced technology who may be just delivering a lecture through a ppt but they integrate the ppt so effectively that you never felt that you need a video for replacement for that so technology integration is a very important skill about which this whole framework basically talks about uh, the framework is basically uh, built up on the idea of solman's solman is a pioneer of pedagogical content knowledge pck he gave this idea in 1986 and uh, Punya Mishra, whose picture is there on the screen and Kohler, they both work on it and they propose a new framework where they introduce the technology with the PCK. The whole framework is basically focusing on the essential qualities of knowledge required by the teacher for technology integration. So the whole framework basically talks about how are you going to integrate technology in your teaching learning? So this framework is that's why very important for us, whether we are a classroom teacher, we are, we are a ODL practitioner or let us uh, start with the Shulman's work. What Shulman said, Shulman actually coined the term pedagogical content knowledge. And he had certain questions which he had raised in his paper. The first question is, where do teachers' explanation come from? Uh, you may have observed that good teachers never repeat what is there in the textbook. So textbook is having a content, but teacher adds on to that content, his uh, explanations by adding relevant examples, by contextualizing the concept with the daily life and nearby experiences. So from where this comes? why a good teacher is a good teacher if he or she is able to explain the things in his or her own words who is a teacher a good teacher how a teacher decides that what to teach how to represent it and how to question students about it these are also the skills the content may be the same for every teacher if you are a trainee uh, like one of my colleague was in education department and she was saying that okay she is looking forward that how she can integrate it in our teaching learning or in our uh, teacher training. So she may be, you know, watching many students teaching the same concept. You may have watched many teachers to teach the same concept, but how to represent it, it is always a different perception, different way. How to question the students about it, how to engage students, these all are the individual skills from where these skills come from. How do teachers take a piece of text and transfer their understanding into it uh, and in the instruction so that the students can comprehend? How? The answer is pedagogical content knowledge, which is something different from the content. Let me take two or three very, very, very concrete examples. If you are a mathematics teacher and you are teaching the concept of mensuration, uh, within mensuration, many things, so those concepts are same for every teacher. But how to teach that, how to teach that, that is the different thing and that is not written in any textbook. I always 
you know, uh, contradict the idea of having a textbook in a classroom. I never believe that teacher should go with a textbook in the classroom because many times if teachers are going with the textbook in the classroom, they got engaged even with the language, with the presentation of the writer. And one thing about which we all should be very clear that textbooks are not for us. Textbooks are for students. They have been written to facilitate the learning of the student, not the teaching. So maximum you can use textbooks to take just the idea or concept, nothing else. So you take the idea or concept from the textbook, then put in your efforts, your explanations, your examples, and convert it into a notch you are going to impart or provide. If you are teaching a, a concept of cell division in a bio class, what do you mean by cell division? We all know about it. But how do you can teach cell division? Some teacher may design an activity, some teacher may design a quiz, some teacher may design a a role play, some teacher may use a video. So it's all about the teacher who decides about the pedagogy. That's why the pedagogical content knowledge is equally important as the content knowledge. The whole idea about the TEPEC framework is that there are three core components at the heart of good teaching practice. That is content, pedagogy, and technology and their interrelationship between them. So if you have the complete idea of content, you have a good exposure to the pedagogy and the technology available at your hand. And if you are able to develop a in meaningful interrelationship between these three, you can use the TAPEC very effectively in your classrooms. So this TAPEC basically focuses on three types of knowledge. That is technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and content knowledge and their integration. So the content which you teach by using a pedagogy means how you teach. These two should be the basis of the any technology which you want to integrate or use in your classroom to enhance learning. Because technology is a tool which supports the pedagogy. Technology is a tool through which you present the content effectively. So let us move towards the three types of knowledge first. This is the framework, initial framework that we talked about technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and content. And when the three all <laughs> mix together, we get the fractions where both are or all three are overlapping. So this topic is about the overlapping portions about which I'm going to talk about in the next coming slides. But before that, I would show you a small video and uh, the video is available on its Punna Mishra's website on uh, that is punnamishra.com. You can see that. Just see, enjoy, and then we will move further for further explanations. It's the soul man, it's the soul man, it's the soul man. Showman Jafar. It's the showman, it's the showman, it's the showman. Showman Jafar. The showman Jafar. Jafar. It's the showman, it's the showman, it's the showman, showman Japan. So, uh, what you see in the video that uh, you know, three different types of knowledges come together, which were proposed by Solman and Solman, we call it Solman Safal. And when we uh, add the techno technological part to it, it becomes TAPAC. So let us focus all three domains uh, one by one. 
the first one is content knowledge content knowledge is basically the knowledge of the subject or the topic which are to be taught which are to be taught by the teacher in the classroom the knowledge of concept the knowledge of theories the knowledge of evidences the knowledge of organizational framework within a subject all such things come under the content content not only now i am talking about the content knowledge of the teacher so the student's content knowledge may be restricted to the exposure to that content through the textbooks or the activities or past experiences but a teacher's content knowledge also includes the best practices in the field the approaches through which the communication can be made about a particular information to the students and content knowledge may differ according to the discipline as well as the grade level how for example let me take the same example of the cell division if you are teaching the concept of the cell division at the level of class 6 and if you are teaching the same concept in class 9 or class 12 the content knowledge which differ though the concept remain the same so or if you are teaching something in the history and same thing you are teaching in the language the content may be the same but the treatment may differ you may uh, you know uh, explain a story of chenamma in your own language textbook as well as you can explain the story of chenamma in a history textbook so in history textbook the treatment with the chenamma the story will be different and in the language textbook the treatment of the story of the chenamma will be different so content can be treated differently in according to the disciplines as well as according to the grade level of the student similarly the instructors or teachers content knowledge may also be differ or the content knowledge which they impart in each class can also differ even a teacher teaching the same content at the same grade level in different classrooms his or her content knowledge may differ according to the level of the students if the students are average students the content knowledge will be at a different play level if the students are you know uh, fast learners or you can say the gifted children then the content knowledge may differ for slow learners the content knowledge may differ so first thing a teacher should keep in our mind that the content knowledge is being decided by many different by different factors it may be level of the student it may be the discipline it may be uh, within the grade there are different uh, sets of knowledge then comes the pedagogical knowledge what do you mean by pedagogical knowledge the knowledge about how to impart the practices how to impart the content so the practices the processes the teaching methods everything which is about the teaching learning comes under pedagogical knowledge it may uh, starts with the purpose values or aims of education it may include the students learning styles classroom management skills your lesson planning approaches assessment information and knowledge so many things how you are going to approach which method you are going to use all these things the methodological thing or the teaching learning dimension comes under the pedagogical knowledge and the third dimension is technological knowledge technological knowledge includes teachers knowledge and ability both a teacher may be knowing about various technologies a teacher may be knowing about uh, name of many technological tools a teacher may be having an access to various resources but if a teacher is not able to use this resources if a teacher is not comfortable with the, those tool if a teacher is not having essential skills to utilize a particular technology his or her technological knowledge is not sound so technological knowledge of a teacher includes the information about the resources tools and technologies also the skills to utilize those and the attitude also technological attitude is very important very important 
there is a very famous model called uh, TAM, Technology Acceptance Model. That model basically talks about that how we accept the technology in our systems. And it is very important that how we accept the technology in our systems, without which it is very difficult that if we are not accepting to the technology, we may not be using to the technology. That's why technological knowledge concerns about the understanding of educational technology and considering its possibilities for a specific subject area or a classroom. So technological knowledge does not include only the knowledge or the ability to use a technology, but also to analyze that which technology can be used with which particular subject or with which particular concept and in which environment, classroom environment. You may be having a very good uh, knowledge of uh, developing a video program. You may be having a skills and uh, softwares with you for developing a video program. But you bet if your students are not having the device or your school is not having, college is not having the device where those videos can be used or run for our students. So you are, even if you are having the resources at your home, even if you are having the knowledge at your home, it is not of any use because your students cannot use it. Also, when the technology can assist the learning. Technological knowledge doesn't mean that anything can be imparted through technology and everything can be imparted through technology. We should have a clear cut understanding that where technology should be used, how technology should be used, and in what amount technology should be used. For example, if you are planning to integrate a video in your lecture, where to place that video, that is also technological knowledge, which also have a clue with the pedagogical knowledge. So their pedagogical and technological knowledge will interact with each other. And then we will come with the TEPEC framework. So in TEPEC framework, you can see that there is technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, content knowledge, and their intersections are, for example, technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge called TPK, technological pedagogical knowledge. The technological knowledge and content knowledge, when they interact with each other, it's known as technological content knowledge, TCK. And when pedagogical knowledge and content knowledge interact with each other, we call it pedagogical content knowledge, PCK. And when all three interact with each other, then comes the technological pedagogical content knowledge, TPACK. So in this way, this TEPEC framework has been developed. Before moving further, I wish that if you people want to say something, want to add something, or uh, want to discuss something, let us discuss for a few minutes, and then I will move uh, in all three types of knowledge, and then how we can integrate it. So I have stopped the presentation now, and I'm opening the session for discussion, mid-session discussion. So if you people are, Tapsri Oja has raised the hand. Yeah, Tapsri, what is your question? Tapsri Hoja, are you there? You have raised your hand. Do you have any question? No question. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask that, um, uh, is it so that in every field or in every subject that can be applied, or there are some limitations of that? So TEPEC is not subject specific. TEPEC is just a framework to suggest how to integrate technology. And what are the considerations which a teacher should keep in mind while planning to integrate the technology? So TEPEC is not a specific subject specific framework that, okay, you can be used in mathematics and not in science. It can be used in social science and not in arts. It is just suggesting how to integrate technology. And when you are integrating the technology, what are the dimensions which you should keep in your mind? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Any other question, please? Any other question, please? Sir, in ADRI model, the design part we can take from that step right now. Yes. Repeat your question. The design part in ADI model, we can have the TEPEC 
concept yes uh, yes we can introduce we can utilize the tapet tapet of this while designing yeah. even at the analysis part also we can uh, have in our mind that uh, tapet okay okay yeah next question there is a question in the chat box yeah tapsri ojha's question is there in the chat box actually sir i want to know tapic is used in which topics i already answered the uh, preeti madam's question that tapic is not the concept or topic specific why you are not trying to understand my thing tapic is just a framework which suggest you how to choose the technology how to use the technology i will come on that question i will come on that question biju please please wait wait for a minute wait for a minute so tapet basically talks only about the idea which give which it helps to uh, you know uh, integrate the technology if i am going to integrate the technology what things i should consider i should consider my content i should consider my pedagogy i should consider the technology and i should consider where i am using this where i am using this the context about which vijus question is there that the context is very important which is encircled everything is contextual tapet clearly says that whatever we are doing in one context cannot be replicated as it is in the another context so the context is the place or the environment where you are going to integrate the technology you may think about a good pedagogy you may think about a very good content you may think about a very standard technology you may plan it very effectively that you are going to integrate it but i just as i said you may integrate it but if it is not reaching to your learner because the environment is not there the infrastructure is not there or i will come further that if i am using a video in english and if my students are hindi medium students so i may found a very interactive video very good video the language but the language is not there which is not understandable by my learners so the context is not matching so all these things basically tapet tells you that what considerations you should follow when you are going to integrate a technology it is not a subject specific or content specific or topic specific things i hope i was able to uh, convey what i wish to convey so do we uh, move further or any other query if there is any other query let me take that otherwise i will move further should i move further yes sir yeah thank you okay so uh <coughs> let me continue the presentation Vijay was asking about this. Why the context is there through a dotted line? You know, any teaching learning is possible within a particular context. A teacher's knowledge is one thing, but a teacher's ability to contextualize that knowledge is another thing. Contextualizing in terms of the teaching environment. contextualizing in terms of the availability of resources contextualizing in terms of the place where you are going to integrate the technology so even the pedagogical knowledge cannot be without context the technological knowledge cannot be without the context and even content cannot be without the context let me give you one example just to explain this context issue uh i was part of a training program for kendri vidyalay teachers and we trained around 12000 teachers there in a six month program uh, two three years back i think 16 to 18 we did that 
and uh, when we visited different kvs we found that uh, kvs are at almost at every corner of the country and once we visited a kv at uh, ladakh and the teacher asked me a question that sir if i want to explain the structure of a leaf to my sixth class students and the part of a leaf the image which is given in the ncert textbook is of a leaf blade of people people is a very uh, common tree in the northern part of the country and even all, almost plains this life is like a heart shaped leaf a big leaf but in ladakh even such trees are not there so how can i explain it if i tell them this ye people ki patti hai isme itne लाइन्स होती हैं इसमें ये वेनेशन होता है इसका ये शेप होता है ये लीफ ब्लेड है दे हैव नॉट सीन इट सो इट मींस दैट दे नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई अ लीफ व्हिच हैज ऑल द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ अ लीफ फ्रॉम देयर ओन कंटेक्स्ट एंड ओनली देन दे कैन एक्सप्लेन दैट सो द कंटेंट इज नॉट द पीपल का लीफ द कंटेंट इज अ लीफ बट इफ अ टीचर मिस अंडरस्टूड इट एंड समटाइम्स टीचर डू द सेम whatever written in the textbook even they replicate the same example they never create a different example which is not in the textbook so replication of the concept is the required the replication of the example each and every line that is not required so for that you need contextualization similarly the pedagogy uh if in your class all the students are you know bright students or very very intelligent so called intelligent students and in another class the students which are average students are not able to understand the as quickly as other students can understand or if your class is a diverse class where the students with different abilities are there different requirements are there students are from the diverse groups of the society are there so the pedagogy cannot be same for every class because the context of your classroom is different so the pedagogical tools which you prefer to use in a class which is full of the bright students you cannot use the same pedagogical tools in a class with the diverse learners you cannot use the same pedagogical principles and methods in a class where students are many students are from the you know below average uh, group or the slow learners so the pedagogy also depends upon the context of the classroom from where the students are coming and context also plays its role in the technology which i have already explained to you that when you are choosing a technology when you are choosing a technology the context in which that technology is to be used is it possible to use a particular technology do you have the resources for that technology are your students having access to that technology those things are also contextual so even whether it is a pedagogical knowledge whether it is a content knowledge or it is a technological knowledge all three things are contextual so when two interact with each other third emerge so we have already discussed about pedagogical knowledge content knowledge and technological knowledge let us talk about the pedagogical content knowledge the technological content knowledge and pedagogical technological knowledge so let us start with the pedagogical content knowledge pck it is the knowledge that teachers have about their content and the knowledge that they have about how to teach that content so when two knowledge come together means what to teach and how to teach that is known as pedagogical content knowledge it was identified by the solman for example if uh, you see the teaching strategies which are being used by a science teacher they may be different from the strategies which are being used by a language or arts teacher because both the teacher cannot utilize the same method because pedagogy is also linked with the content so the content treatment in the science is different from the content treatment in language or art that's why the pedagogy 
is a different for a teacher. Similarly, you can see that the teaching strategy of an art teacher can be different from a mathematics teacher. So the specific knowledge which allow teacher to use most effective method of teaching a specific content is known as pedagogical content knowledge. Another is that in the pedagogical content knowledge, it is the teacher who interpret and choose to represent the subject through methodologies and technologies. Uh, the conditions that promote learning at that links among the curriculum assessment and pedagogy. Teachers are there to examine the learning environment from multiple angles and access various methods of teaching for effective selection of delivery methods. So it's not so simple to have a pedagogical content knowledge because you analyze the content as well as the learning environment where that content is to be delivered means the contextualization from different aspects and angles. And then you decide that which teaching method or which methodology is more effective. It is also recommended many times that you should reevaluate the curriculum with a view of students prior knowledge. So you may be having some concept to be presented, but your students may be having prior knowledge about that. So you need to enrich your content. You may not be replicate the same content which have been suggested in your syllabus or curriculum. You need to explore different teaching strategies how and how well the content can be treated with that teaching strategy. So this comes under PCK. Second is technological pedagogical knowledge. Now I'm putting the content aside and I'm bringing the pedagogy and technological knowledge together. So it is a set of skills teachers develop to identify the best technology to support a particular pedagogical approach. You may have, uh, uh, you know, studied various pedagogical approaches. You may have studied about the group uh, techniques. You may have studied about the individual learning techniques. You may have studied about the teacher-centered methods, the learner-centered methods, the group-centered methods. Many things you have studied. For example, let me take a very simple example. Lecture. Lecture is a method. It is a pedagogical approach. But how you can integrate technology in your lecture to make it more effective? And which technology can be integrated with the lecture and which cannot? So this is known as technological pedagogical knowledge. For example, I have written in the uh, here also that uh, if you want to give a collaborative work or group activity to our students, so that is the pedagogy, but which technological tool can be used to facilitate the collaborative learning that is technological pedagogical knowledge can be used wiki for that can be used a zoom room for that. That is our, our understanding and our knowledge, because we should know which technology is there for group work. Only that technology can be integrated with the group work. So when we decide in our uh, teaching learning that we will teach this particular method or this particular, this particular uh, method we will utilize in our classroom, we also try to identify the appropriate technology for that particular teaching method. Every technology cannot be integrated with every teaching method. So this knowledge is known as technological pedagogical knowledge. That's why to build TPK, a comprehensive understanding of the technological tools as well as how they can be pedagogically integrated to enhance the learning is imperative, without which it is not possible to develop a technology. Uh, 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 my voice my is voice. echoing. Someone has opened the mic. Yes, sir. Just let me see. Yeah. Thank you. So. Uh, and another thing, you see many technological tools which we use these days are not designed for educational purpose. Even this Zoom through which we are interacting with each other, this is not a teaching learning tool. It is a meeting tool for industries. But the time came and we 
started utilizing it for educational purposes and zoom also found a good market in the educational world and that's why and that's why zoom transformed itself as an educational tool later on let me give you a very recent example blockchain technology nowadays whenever anyone is taking a lecture in the future technologies in education even nep is also talking about blockchain or artificial intelligence but do you think that artificial intelligence or blockchain technologies were ever developed for educational purpose no never even ar br were not developed for educational purpose they were developed for entertainment blockchain was developed basically to regulate the bitcoin business the basic technology which regulates the whole uh, cryptocurrency business is bit uh, blockchain people identified its utility in education so that's why uh, because every technology is not for the educational purpose you need to develop the skills to look beyond the common use of that technology and you need to customize it for your pedagogical purpose i'm giving you another very important example in the recent time social media has emerged a lot but few years back we have never thought that we will use facebook for classrooms lecturing but we customized it and we started giving facebook live lectures we identify its benefits we never planned that we will use whatsapp for educational purpose even the recent social media which is a uh, Uh, bubble social media like uh, the uh, audio social medias are there clubhouse and all other uh, audio social media groups are there so have they ever thought that we 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 will use clubhouse for a classroom discussion but now many people are using clubhouse for a classroom discussion but clubhouse was basically to spend time with the like minded people and talk to each other people can join and talk find and talk join and talk So it's kind of a audio social media, but it is being now people have started using it for educational purpose. So that ability to customize a technology for pedagogical purpose is basically technological pedagogical knowledge. Then comes the next dimension, which is technological content knowledge. So it is the set of the skills which teachers acquire to help identify. the best technology to support their students as they learn the content now pedagogy is a part <coughs> which technology is best suited for a particular content do you think that if you have do two technologies one is a animation video and one is a powerpoint presentation these are two technologies and you are going to teach the concept of self cell division in your class which technology you will find most appropriate definitely you will go for video because a cell division is a process and process cannot be explained through the powerpoint presentation if they watch the video they will watch that how uh, in animation that how cells are being divide, divided how the chromosomes are being distributed how the cell division takes place in an animation video then they will understand it better than a powerpoint presentation based on some pictures or text so it means that teacher also need to learn that which content can be dealt with which type of technology here is an example of hurricane on the slide which i have taken from somewhere so in the technological content knowledge teachers need to understand that what specific technologies are best suited for addressing the subject matter learning in their domain and how the content dictates or perhaps even change the technology a uh, example is written in the bottom that viewing the heart as a pump is a way in which technology has provided a new perspective for understanding the phenomena otherwise we will all reading in our science textbooks that okay heart is a pumping station it pumps the blood once into article then the ventricle then into vena cava then into artery and all that 
all all those terms are around us and we many times when a teacher teaches this in a 11th or 12th class classroom a student just imagine that when the blood is going to the vena cava how the bulbs are functioning which valve is opening which valve is closing but if you show an animation video of the function of the heart student learn it quickly that yes how heart is pumping the blood so that is the technological content knowledge when we include all three then kohler said and kohler and mishra said that that become the tapac so tapac is i'm just quoting them not my words tapac is the basis of effective teaching with technology requiring an understanding of the representation of concepts using technology and pedagogical pedagogical techniques that use technologies in constructive way to teach content knowledge of what makes concept difficult or easy to learn and how technology can help redress some of the problems that students face so the knowledge of students previous knowledge theories of epistemology knowledge of how technology can be used to build existing knowledge to develop a new epistemology or strengthen the old one so what kohler and mishra suggested in their model that whenever we are going to integrate the technology we should think about all the three dimensions that is technological dimension pedagogical dimension and content dimension and try to converge all these three if we will not do it we may not be able to use technology effectively in our teaching learning process how to do it there are certain key considerations on which i am coming now the first is that the concept from the content being taught can be represented using the technology first believe a teacher should have in him or her that yes there are concepts in the content which can be taught through the technology if you think that it cannot be taught through the technology you will not not be able to implement through the technology second consideration is that pedagogical techniques can be communicate can communicate content in different ways using technology so the same content which we are delivering through a lecture the same content which we are delivering through a lecture can be differently treated if we integrate some technology in our lecture because lecture may involve only the verbal media but the visual part can also be integrated to it third thing that different content concept required different skills from the students that's why to help the diverse learners technology can help because technology can be utilized as per the requirements and abilities of the students fourth point that students come into the classroom with different backgrounds backgrounds in terms of their educational experiences background in terms of their exposure to the technology so whenever we plan to utilize the technology we should also consider this aspect in our mind technology can be used to strengthen the existing knowledge as well as to develop the new one if we are using it effectively so what we need to do we need to represent the concepts using technology we need to identify the pedagogical techniques where technology can be used in constructive way we should have the knowledge that what makes the concept difficult or easy to learn if we are using a technology for the sake of technology and the use of technology is making the concept more difficult to understand than rather than making it easy then that means that you are not having the tapek in your mind and you are not consider the technology from the point of view of the pedagogy because the concept is there technology is there but pedagogy is lacking that's why the easy concept may become difficult when you are using a technology 
so how technology can help to redress some of the problems of the students which they are facing this understanding is also required for the teacher and how technologies can be used to build the existing knowledge these are few uh, key considerations but there are certain barriers also which we should keep in mind whenever we are planning to integrate the technology number one is the cost very important never go for a technology which is costly for you as well as for your learner very important consideration if we will not have this in mind we may create a different kind of uh, social class in coming future the class or the students which were having the access to the technology and the students which were not having the access to the technology due to the cost time intensive don't use the technology which prolong your processes prolong your processes if you can teach a concept by normal teaching learning in 30 minutes and if you are using technology and if you are not able to deliver the same concept even in 90 minutes or 120 minutes it means that the technology which you have chosen is basically time intensive so that technology may be avoided disruptive disruptive is a term which can be used in both the ways as a barrier also and as a facilitator also for example artificial intelligence nowadays is known as disruptive technology so here the dis disruption is in the positive and negative way both in the positive way that we can ensure in future the individualized learning but the negative dimension is that it has a lot of repercussions on the privacy of learners right so we need to understand but how and even we are very fond of using you know google nowadays but we are paying a price for that even the google is free to us but if we are using a smartphone and if your when you install your camera or when you start your uh, phone you have given a permission to the google to use your camera or to use your mic or you have given the access to them so even i am taking this lecture the google is Uh, well aware that yes through my uh, mobile camera and through my microphone of my camera they are well aware that what i am talking and to whom i am talking the data is being recorded with them so we have given the permission to them so this is an important concern concern privacy that's why whenever we are using a technology we should prefer to use a technology which is more you know user friendly and which has less privacy issues you must have seen initially when the this zoom was started a lot of hue and cry was there against the zoom and the people many people even i have not used zoom for long duration i mean there was a time when i was refusing a lecture if someone is asking okay the lecture will be on zoom i said sorry i don't use zoom you please go to the google meet or and later on i understand what i was zoom is doing openly others are doing silently but everyone is playing in the same market digital divide is the biggest barrier for technological implementation our students in the rural india are not having access to the technology they are not having the handheld devices they are not having the data all these things are the biggest barrier traditional mindset inertia to the technology is a change challenge many teachers are not ready to use technology they are saying okay theek ye covid chala jayega fir hum wapas classroom mein waise hi padhane lagenge i don't think it will happen ever the effect which this situation has put in the whole country in the whole world and in all dimensions of our life education will definitely change and has changed forever lack of confidence is a potential barrier many teachers do not try to use technology because they don't find themselves confidence enough to use technology infrastructure i have already discussed about it and few personality development opportunities some people are saying because there is less interaction so the personality development opportunities are very less in technological implementation in the classrooms and this i am also observing when many times i notice it suppose if this workshop is in face to face mode in the university of kerala you all must be there if you are outsiders you may be there as in the residential setup so whatever tasks we were giving you were having an opportunity to interact with your peers 
uh, many group tasks were possible which are not possible right now uh, too much a lot of interaction is missing a lot of question answers are missing so all these things contribute to the development of our personality which are missing so this is a potential difference so friends this is all about the technological pedagogical knowledge what i wish that we should understand all the three dimensions and whenever we are going to integrate a technology in any uh, form whether we are integrating or blending the technology in our classroom teaching learning or we are going for a flipped classroom approach or we are going in future the whole online method we need to consider that technological knowledge content knowledge and pedagogical knowledge all three are equally important these are few papers if you wish to read you can read two very important papers is uh, of mishra and kohler of 2006 and 2009 and one is the website that is punnamishra.com where you will find a lot about tepec most of the things i have taken from there and there is a website of educational technology net they also talks about tepec so whatever i have presented in this presentation most of the things i have taken from these websites or these such papers i just put things into a sequence and try to present it so that you can understand otherwise neither the concept is mine nor the idea is mine i am just a propagator or just a presenter of the concept so now uh, it's all about from my side 